Before you learn to code, here are some things to know so that you gain a better understanding and clarity of how coding works so that you can learn things faster and more easily. Code is basically glorified algebra. And algebra is basically the study of functions and variables. Let's start with something simple. X plus one. What's the answer? Exactly, we don't know. Why? Because the answer depends on X, which is a variable. Whatever number X represents, you basically substitute that number into X plus one. So if X is one, the answer is two. If X is five, the answer is six and so on. Now let's upgrade. We can rewrite X plus one into something else like this. You may have seen this before in school. This is called a function. A function is a rule that takes in an input and produces an output. Here, the letter F is the name of the function. It doesn't have to be F. You could call it G, H, whatever. The X here is a variable or technically a parameter. It's basically an input value. Whatever number X represents on the left hand side, you basically substitute that number into the X plus one on the right hand side. That right hand side is called a rule or command or instruction. Obviously, if we don't know X, we don't know the answer. So a function needs to be triggered or invoked. We can do this by substituting in a number to replace the X. If X is five, we could write it as function of five equals five plus one equals six and so on. We call this value an argument. Basically, the difference between a parameter and an argument is that the parameter is a placeholder while the argument is the value that substitutes the placeholder to therefore trigger the function. Finally, the answer six is called the output or the return of a function. Now the example you just saw here is taken from the maths context and can only accept numbers as its parameters. However, functions in the programming world are way more powerful. You can build functions that can accept all sorts of data, such as numbers, strings, true or false values. These are called data types. And you can also have data structures like arrays, dictionaries, trees, Basically, these are just fancy ways of storing and organizing data types. Once you understand this, coding becomes easy to understand. While different programming languages express functions in different ways, the core concepts of parameters, arguments, rules, return, data types, and data structures are universal. A function can also have more complex rules than just simple arithmetic. For example, you can use conditional logic, that is, if A, then do B, else do C. Or you can use loops to help you repeat a calculation as many times as necessary. Functions can work together. The output of one function can be reused in another function to produce another output. Ultimately, whenever you are writing an app or program, you are basically writing a collection of functions. Each function achieves a small purpose and can work with other functions in the program to achieve a bigger purpose. For example, this dinosaur jumping game on Google is made up of a bunch of functions that control particular aspects of the game. For example, there's a function that draws a dinosaur to the screen, a function that allows a dinosaur to run, a function that listens whenever you press a space bar so the dinosaur can jump, a function that keeps track of the score, etc. All these functions work together to bring the game to life. Indeed, complex programs have a lot of functions, which can get very messy. Luckily, this is where you have the concepts of classes, objects, interfaces, etc., which are basically fancy ways to organize functions in a neat and efficient manner. Ultimately, coding is the art of manipulating data. If you can represent something in the world as numbers or strings, you can basically codify that thing. For example, images are basically pixels, and each pixel is just a list of green, red, and blue values. 
which are basically numbers. And these can be processed by functions. This is how we can program cool things like computer vision, Photoshop, and video editing programs. It's just functions built on top of another, working together to create, read, and edit data so that you have a complete full program. And today, we don't have to build everything from scratch. Many languages have built-in functions that are available for you to use. You can also leverage of other people's code, known as libraries, to build your own program. So whenever you're learning a code topic, always think to yourself, what does this relate to? Am I learning a new data type, a new data structure, or is this another type of function? With that mindset, you'll likely stay on track and never get lost when learning how to code. With that in mind, good luck with your coding journey. Let's go.